Greetings and welcome back. In that first lecture, we accomplished a lot. We got our project set up. We set up our scene. We set up a couple labels for our cash and our firm name. And we saw how to set these up. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going we're gonna to look at the city idea. So we got our integer. We got our, our strings. I'm assuming that you can flesh out bank as an integer debt is an integer, cannons is an integer, and labels for all those. You should be able to do that. That's why we're going to move right on to how we could represent cities using a different data type. So we're going to have multiple cities, and for right now we're just going to represent them as strings. And so to do that, we can come in here and type var cities equals, and using this brace like here, we can actually create strings of our cities. Now, just like with Python, we can use single quotes or double quotes. As long as we use the same on the front and on the end, it, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to just use double quotes here, and I'm going to make Hong Kong as one city, and I can use a comma, get our second city, and we'll have Shanghai as our second city, just like that. So we use commas to separate our items, and this is defined our cities, and we could if we wanted to add one more. Nagasaki. There we go, Nagasaki. So we got three cities and they're stored inside of this cities variable. Now, let's come back here to our main and we'll take our cache label and duplicate it. So I can right click and duplicate that and bring it down. And we'll name this city label. We'll keep it simple. It's going to be named city label and we'll give it a placeholder text. Like that. It doesn't matter if that isn't quite spelled right. It's just a placeholder. Now let's jump back over to our script. And how could we just show the city, like the first city as a default when we enter our ready function. It's actually remarkably easy. I'm going to go ahead and reference the city label and the text property and we'll just say it equals cities and I can reference that very first one by putting a zero in here. And uh, indexes are, for our arrays are zero based and it is in most languages, it is in Python, it is in C, that this is the first item in the list but we reference it with zero. So this one is one and this one is two. So if we want to start Hong Kong, we can do that. And oops, we have an error. I, okay, you can see uh, invalid set text instance base null instance. So notice how it says in this error we got on null instance. So it trapped this error because I have a lowercase c here. So it's just that simple, a, a lowercase instead of an uppercase, that will ruin you. Maybe a good example to get more comfortable with the IntelliSense than typing so much. But when I restart it, notice that we have Hong Kong and I would need to, of course, do this if I want a label there to have city be the label there. So now that we've got our collection of cities and we saw how we can get, you know, to a particular one with our index here, let's see how we can create like a leave port button to go to a specific city. So let's come back over here to our main and right click and add a child node. And this time we want a button. Let's just pick a regular old base button. So there's a button. You can see there's a lot of other buttons as well, but we'll just use a regular button and hit create. And where did our button go? Yeah, there it is. It always puts everything up in the upper left and kind of small, but we got it under control here. You have to use the middle mouse button to drag your viewport around. So click and hold the view there. And then I'm going to just bring this in here like this. And we're just going to type in our text, leave port, we'll just say Hong Kong or Shanghai. We'll do Hong Kong as our text. Now later we'll build these out um, and we won't have like hard-coded buttons. We'll create these on the fly at some point. But for now, this, this is what we'll do. So we're going to have a Hong Kong button. 
and then we'll duplicate it and we'll have a Shanghai button. So we'll just go between two of them for now because we're not going to build it out this way. This is more of just a way for you to understand signals and buttons and for us to see how you could, if you wanted to, you could build it out this way. I mean, it's probably no worse designed than the first Taipan uh, when it came out. They didn't have the tools we had. Uh, but So you could build the game out this way. It's just not a great design pattern because we're hard coding the text of our cities in here when we've got a, a collection of them already at hand to build dynamically. But we can see how this will work. So what we want to do is when we click Shanghai, we want to go to Shanghai, and then obviously when we click Hong Kong, we want to go to Hong Kong. So how can we do that? Let's when we're on our Hong Kong button, let's say we're we're starting out in Hong Kong, so let's uh, get our Shanghai button wired up first. So I click on Shanghai just like this and I click on node so you have your inspector tab here you got node and these are all the events or signals they call them signals here that are raised by a button that can happen like you have mouse entered mouse um, exited like for a few mouse over it and things like that but the one we're interested in is pressed so if we click press there's a connect button right down here next to my little recording thing and if I click connect then I can pick which node to connect to. Now we want to connect our button to our main panel. And you can see down in here that it's going to create a method for us in our panel called on Shanghai button pressed. So I can click connect just like that. And then in this case, I, it gives us code here, replace with your function body, just like that, that we can now decide and set our city. So we kind of need a city index. So let's set up a city index for our city. We'll say current city index. So we're real clear that it's going to keep track of the number that we're on. And we can use a zero here. And that means that we can use this here for our current city index. And then we would say current city index plus equals one or I'm sorry equals one so this is the index for sh Shanghai I know that from right here so it's basically gonna pass it on and then we can take this this city label text and just paste it in there for now and so very much not how you would want to design it but it's showing you how when we press this button, we can set a city index, whatever we want, and then we update our text. This will at least get us going to Shanghai when we hit the button. See how we go to Shanghai? Now we can just do the same thing and wire up a button for Hong Kong. So we click on the Hong Kong button. We click pressed. We click connect. We want to connect it to our main panel. We go like that, and we could just copy and paste this in the here and set it to zero. I'll leave you the exercise to do Nagasaki. Now we're gonna run it and so if we go to Shanghai we go to Shanghai and we can go back to Hong Kong and notice like if you just click clicking Hong Kong it doesn't hurt anything because it's just setting it to the same city so nothing really wrong there but uh, as you can see that's a simple way to create a signal and change the city that we're at and you could create multiple buttons leave the port you know and go and from there build out a lot like I said you could add Nagasaki you could add five or six other cities but before we leave we're gonna at least make this a little bit better and um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this process Delta this is just a commented out function that if you uncommented this this gets called every frame um, the, of the game but we're not going to be using that right now and instead we're going to just create a custom function by saying func here and just call it update UI and do an open close parentheses and a colon remember all of our functions are defined with a colon at the end and we can take all of this code here that updates the UI and paste it into our update UI method that we just defined and then I'm going to come in here and call update UI. And then that means that we can then come here and update UI 
and here and update UI. So this makes it at least a little more modular so that you, this code doesn't have to be duplicated every time and that we're calling it from multiple places. So this is just a perfect little example of the need for having at least a common method that you call rather than duplicating code like this in three and four places and on and on and on and on. So let's go ahead and run it. And just like that, you see that we have it all working. It's a little more modular, but we learned a lot in this lesson. We learned how to set up a list of strings here. We learned how to reference those, those lists using an index that we first hard-coded to zero, but then we created an integer. Then we also learned about signals. We created buttons and called a method in here that let us set these variables. So, you know, this course is a little different to some. We're moving fast and introducing you things as you need them to build this game up and uh, supplement with other knowledge and Google and references because you need that. But uh, hopefully uh, you like where we're going with this because we're going to have a game up and running here in those times. So look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.